Ready to go? Yes, sir. Uh, if you could, your thoughts on the W. Yeah, really, really, really happy with it. Um, I think the second set was a huge, huge uh, win for me. You know, five, three, four, love him serving, how good he serves. Um, that was really, really big. And uh, to break there and then to, to win that set was huge. Uh, he did a great job in the third set. He changed his tactics on me, and, and it really uh, got me out of sorts. But he did a great job in the fourth, um, you know, going one break and, and winning that. So ultimately, really happy with the way I played. He's playing at a really high level as well. So it was, it was a really good match, I thought. Thank you. Name and affiliation, one question each. So I can go around the room. Jake. Uh, Jake Nissy, Daily Mail. Uh, you mentioned the crowd and the role that it played after the match. Um, I'm curious now having uh, sort of a few deep runs here at the Open, if you feel like your understanding of how to kind of harness that energy from the crowd and use it to your advantage has, <coughs> has evolved or changed at all since you've become kind of a more established uh, face around here. Yeah, I think I think it's it's picking your moments. I mean, because you can get so high. Because the New Yorkers, they'll get excited for anything. So, um, just picking picking and choosing your moments. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been I mean figuring it out much more. But also, you want to stay between the lines a lot. I mean, three out of five is so long. So, and every day is different. You know, I played you know Ben the other day. It was kind of cooler conditions. You know, today we play. It's quite humid. Not very hot, but really humid. So, um, you know, I'm sweating a lot. So I don't want to be like exerting so much energy on on that on celebrations and you know celebrating points rather than staying in moments. So it's kind of figuring out. Um, but obviously, you always gotta, you know, applaud yourself with with separation from the other guy, breaks, and you know, consolidating breaks and things like that. So, um, but yeah, and then if I'm, you know, if I'm down, you know, I was down, I think, in the second set, you know, or sorry, the third set, you know, three one, uh, love forty, and had a hold, you know, you get excited there, just, you know, just things like that. In the back, Charlie. Congrats, Francis. Uh, Charlie Ekushan from the Athletic. Do you wanted to ask, like, a couple of days ago, you went into the shelter match probably a 50-50 match, then it looked like you're going to play Novak, and all of a sudden you're in the quarters, you're one of the favorites. Like, how's it been for you? It feels like quite a whirlwind couple of days. Where's your head at? I appreciate the compliment. They think I'm one of the favorites. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I wasn't really thinking about it like that. I'm more just obviously Novak out. To be honest with you, like, um, I, I mean, I don't, you know, Alexi's been playing unbelievable. He's won a master series. Um, you know, they played three. This is the third time playing a slam this year. You know, Alexi's gotten sets off him. You know, no leg just, you know, won Olympics. I'm, you know, it wasn't, you know, for me being a tennis guy, it wasn't the most surprising thing in the world. Um, obviously, you know, being no leg is a huge win at any point, any time, no matter, you know, where, when. But um, I kind of feel like Alexi had the level, and he showed it tonight. It was a really, really high level. So, um, you know, I had to come up with great stuff. But... Yeah, I mean, I'm not really looking like, oh, you know, favorites and things like that. I'm just, I'm just day by day, literally. Um, you know, recovery days and focusing on that. You know, when max day comes, and you start kind of focusing on the max. You know, grand slams, two weeks. You know, a lot, a lot of going on. Just can't, can't get ahead of yourself and you know, look on what could happen. Things shaking out. Everyone's good, so it doesn't really matter who's in or who's not. <clears throat> Hey Francis, uh, Tawani Gara from The Guardian. Uh, you talked quite a bit about the difficult period you had before this summer. Um, I'm curious uh, if what you've learned about yourself during that period and how, in a positive way, it's changed you at all. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah this time around it definitely changed me. Um, because I guess, I guess I think it teaches, man. Like, you know, um, I mean, I, just don't don't get comfortable, man. Like it's the most unforgiving game we have, right? You know, um, don't think you got all the answers. Um, don't get complacent, cause um, you know, I mean, the game will test you, man. Like, um, and it's so easy when you let go of the rope to you know go through a whirlwind and stuff. But um, it's, but at the same time, you know, I'm I think I'm 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 very 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 tough kid, man. Um, I can. You know, I mean, I can turn around things very, very quickly as long as I, you know, fully put myself there. And also, you know, when you when you make those tough and right decisions, I mean, I think it's huge to have the right people around you. I have great people around me, um, you know, friends, family, my agents, like making me do the tough thing, making me, you know, put the right people in place for me to start doing well. Um, you know, having those tough conversations, even if I don't want to have them, you know, have them. So, um, but everything happens happens when it's meant to happen, and I'm. I'm glad it's happening now because this is the most important time for me. Brian. 
Ryan Mooney, Associated Press. It seems like a lot of guys talk about they didn't have a lot of energy this time of year. It's been a long season. It's a tough calendar. <clears throat> Is there almost an advantage for you because it seems like you care so much about this tournament, like you can't be tired now? It's, you know, that, that's not going <laughs> to – that will not affect you? It's so easy to say that when things go south. Uh, you know, I'm tired. I mean, everyone's – Traveled, everyone's played, you know, win or, win or lose, everyone's, you know, done the calendar, you know? I mean, um, I don't think that's, I don't think that's an excuse. I just think, um, yeah, that, that if you're not at your best, you're going to lose. I mean, the depth in the game, as I said, you know, numerous times is very, 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 very high. You know, if you're not ready to play, if you're not fully present, you're going to lose. And, you know, I mean, you can count it, tiredness and things like that. There's no excuse calling, nobody cares. So, um, but for me, you know, I'm I'm ready to go. I've been, you know, protecting my energy. I've been, you know, whatever I got to do to be at my best and, you know, be able to compete. So um, that's all I can say. Right here in the front. Cher Taylor, New York Beacon. Um, how did you feel he changed in his game in the third set, and how did you adjust in the fourth set? Yeah, he, you know, I guess he played a lot more higher balls. It roped me into coming forward, um, slicing the backhand much more, um, then started passing me really well. Um it was really humid conditions, so when he was playing slower, it's pretty kind of. It felt hard to hit the room, and I think in the fourth, you know, I started taking my time, stopped rushing, um, trying to get the points done, and just kind of stay stay with it. Um, he helped me out there a little bit at three two, not making that many first serves in that game. So, but yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, I don't know if that was from him or maybe you know his coaches, you know, told him that, but it was definitely a good change for him. Test.com. Did you think that match point went in when you hit when you hit the ball off the racket? It was so close. Oh, the forehand? Yeah. Oh, I thought I overcooked it. I was like, when I when I hit it, I was like, damn. Um, but uh, yeah, when the crowd and the, and the crowd just went nuts. But I was just like, yo, just don't 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 do the automatic call. Don't do the automatic call. And when no one said anything, that's why my reaction wasn't really. Um, I didn't really have one. But uh, yeah, I was just happy it was done anyway. Reem. Congrats. Uh, we saw on television you caught up with Serena before the match, and I'm just wondering, what's it like having her around now? She, she'd be sorry saying she's excited to be a fan around the tour. What yeah, it's, like? it's, it's crazy seeing her, and, and uh, it's not playing. It's, it's still like, still, it's still wild. Um, but, uh, but I mean, you know, for her, you know, wanting to come out and talk to me before the match, telling me, you know, she's always following no matter what, um, telling me it's so good to see, you know, now that I'm done, you know, you're the guy of color playing and doing well. I'm just like, I'm coming come from her. I mean, that's I mean, that's a loud sentence. I'm like, damn, um, you know, that's that's really really cool um, that that she that she sees me as that, and um, you know, her telling me she just wants nothing for the best for me, giving me some game right before the match. How you feeling? Like where you at? And it's so funny her asking me that. Like I'm like nervous to respond because I'm like, she's not someone you're gonna you're gonna bullshit and just say like you know she's not trying to hear that. So um, yeah, I was just like, you know, just just you know, it's between us. I mean, whatever our conversation between us, but um, it was it was really cool to have her want to talk to me before a match and really and really say she wants me to do this thing and that I'm capable of doing it. You know, and, and com it coming from her, I mean, I. I mean, it's just so loud. I mean, I don't think any it will hit me like that if anybody else said it to me. Right there. for Clay. Talking about legends, uh, you play your um, a very important match in 2017 against uh, Roger Federer here. What do you remember from that match, and what uh, it talked talked you to to what you are you are doing now here in New York that you get so pumped? I was 19, man. That was a long, long time ago. Um, well, I think at that time I was like, well, I'm definitely, I definitely should be here. Um, that was my second or third year, second or third U.S. Open. Yeah, third U.S. Open. Um, and I was, just, I remember I was so amped but so nervous. I'm like, I'm playing Roger. Like, he's going to be wearing an all-black Nike fit. It's going to be sick. Like, um, New York, like lights are so bright. Um, I was like, this is gonna be, this is gonna be unreal. And then when we went five, I was just like, yo, am I about to really beat this dude? Like, this is crazy. Um, but I think you know that 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 definitely, that definitely just said to me that I'm I'm ready for these moments. I like to be in these moments. I'm comfortable there. Um, and even not winning, and at, at that time he had an insane year too, won a couple of slams. So 
It was it just made me made me think that I'm capable for sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for. Hi, I'm John McEnroe, and welcome to Eurosport Tennis on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Tennis.